we're reviewing some of the smartest and dumbest moves by professional athletes. Number 5. Marshawn Lattimore Marshawn Lattimore is a cornerback for the New Orleans Saints. When he was drafted by the Saints back in 2017, he signed a four-year, $15.3 million fully guaranteed contract as a rookie. It was all fully guaranteed since he was a first-round pick. Fast forward to 2020. The Saints had a fifth-year option to pay him $10.2 million for his fifth season. They decided to use that option in early 2020. This means so far, Marshawn's earned roughly $25.6 million in the NFL. In his GQ interview about how he spent his first million, Lattimore seems to be relatively financially savvy with his money. Even though he signed a guaranteed deal of over $15 million on his rookie contract, Marshawn realized that things can change quickly in the NFL. He knew the way his money was coming in isn't lasting forever. But before we get into our opinions on what smart and dumb purchases, here's our disclaimer. First of all, we're not financial advisors, so don't take this as financial advice. Second, ultimately, at the end of the day, the value of what someone gets back with what they spend their money on ultimately is up to them. We're not giving opinions on what's quote worth it to a specific athlete, but instead we're giving our views on what can actually be recouped on what they spend on themselves. With that out of the way, let's get into some of these purchases. As a rookie, Marshawn's base salary was just $465,000, but remember, he did get paid a $9.3 million signing bonus. To most people, that would feel like winning the lottery, but Marshawn didn't really go off the rails in the first year. In fact, his worst financial decision he admitted to on spending his first million dollars was the $120,000 he spent on chains and jewelry. Most of that money he spent is money he's not getting back, since selling any custom jewelry means pennies on the dollar. What about the smart financial moves? The smartest thing he did was actually leasing his teammate Von Bell's Mercedes. He decided to do that after he wanted to buy a Rolls Royce Wraith, but his older teammates talked him out of buying a car that cost more than half his first year's salary. He can afford that car now, but back on his rookie contract, he really couldn't afford it. He made the much smarter decision of taking over Bell's car note for a year. Later on, he went on to lease a new Range Rover, which is typically the smarter move than buying if he likes to keep his cars current with the year. The rest of his purchases on the million are mm, iffy, but understandable. For example, he bought a reasonable house for his mom for $500,000. He also bought her a car for thirty-five dollars These types of purchases to take care of mom and dad are completely understandable, if not commendable. However, one of the main things all athletes and really anyone should look to do is to minimize their liabilities. Hopefully, he's made sure his mom can afford the property taxes for the house and the car or else he's gonna have to pay that himself. It's funny how someone has to also be able to afford a big gift. He also spent $80,000 on designer clothes for himself. Dropping close to 100 k on clothes seems excessive, but a lot of luxury clothes can recoup money. It all depends on what he bought. Some limited edition designer brands can actually go up in value after buying it, such as Louis Vuitton Supreme collaborations. And if he actually bought designer clothes used, something we doubt, he can recoup most of the money. A general rule for luxury designer clothing is that it can recoup around 50% of what it costs brand new. This is much higher when compared to fast fashion clothing brands such as H&M and Zara. The money paid for fast fashion is money that's basically a sunk cost. Marshawn also bought a Rolex for 25 k which can actually be a decent investment. That's because Rolexes hold their value and limited edition Rolexes can easily appreciate. He also went on vacation with his boys for 5 k which is something he can easily afford with what he was getting paid. What we liked also was that he was smart enough to realize that he didn't need to fly in a private jet, and he confessed that he was looking for the cheapest flights. Overall, we think that Marshawn seems to be relatively smart with his spending. If buying chains and jewelry for 120 k was his dumbest purchase, he's doing something right. We'll give him a B-minus on what he spent on his first million. As far as his mindset on saving and money management overall, we'll give him a B- minus as well. He seems to understand that he has a small window to make a high income in the NFL, and that he has to be careful with his money. But he didn't say how much he's actually saving in his interview with GQ. Let's hope he's been saving and investing at least half his income. Number 4. Will Hernandez Will Hernandez is a guard who plays for the New York Giants. When he was drafted back in 2018, he signed a four-year, $7.45 million contract that included a signing bonus of roughly $3.5 million. So far, Will's earned $5.9 million on his rookie contract. However, he may not get the full value because his status with the Giants in 2021 is up in the air. Because he was picked in the second round, only the first two years of his contract are guaranteed. Will himself said that he knows that his income can end at any time, so he knew how important it was to save money. 
Hopefully he's saved a lot of money like he said he would. In his interview with GQ on how he spent his first million, he said he'd saved 70% of his money. If he did save 70%, then really none of his purchases are dumb decisions. That's because he's spending well within his means. It means that he's setting himself up for an early retirement and if he just put his money to very conservative investments, he'll never have to work again. Even if he can't recoup any of the money he spent, it won't matter. So what were some of Will's worst purchases? In his GQ My First Million interview, he said that he bought a bidet. In case you don't know what that is, it's the toilet that shoots water you know where. He just loved it when he used his first one at a casino in Vegas. But did he need to pay $4,500 for a toilet with a bidet built in? Mm, most likely not. He could have easily bought a bidet from Toto that goes on a regular toilet for just around 500 bucks. What makes this toilet extra special that's worth the extra $4,000? He's definitely not recouping that extra 4K he put in. He also bought a life-size Batman figure for $3,000 that he happened to see in a comic book store. That was an impulse purchase. He also bought a $1,000 Infinity Gauntlet. That was another impulse purchase. Collectibles generally get back pennies on the dollar unless they're limited edition. It's more or less money that he's not getting back. Another really bad spending decision he made on a whim was spending a lot of money at Nobu for a sushi dinner for just four people. It can be almost understandable if it was a special occasion, but this was just a random night. He didn't look at the menu prices at Nobu, a notoriously expensive restaurant. All of a sudden, he ran the bill up to a whopping $3,000. It's true, Nobu has really high quality sushi, but he could have had a sushi dinner on the same tier of quality probably for $500. That extra $2,500 he spent for Nobu, he probably couldn't have tasted the difference. This is especially since he confessed that he just started eating sushi. $3,000 for Hernandez in the grand scheme of things isn't that much, but 3K here, 3K there consistently can add up quickly and it can easily just become a part of the lifestyle for someone. So what were his smartest financial decisions? He bought some proper upscale dress clothes for around $20,000. This is a necessary expense for him so he can look proper when he travels with the team. He also needs it for appearances, which there are plenty of for him in a market such as New York City. If you bought the right clothes, they become investments that can last him a lifetime. The rest of his purchases fall into the it depends category. For example, he bought a Nissan GTR for 115 grand plus another 10 grand on upgrades. This isn't that bad if he's planning on keeping the car for life, but if he's planning on getting rid of it in a year or two, he should have just leased it. He dropped 20 k for his living room setup, which isn't excessive for something that he's going to be enjoying every day. He bought a big TV, a big couch, an Xbox, a PS4, and a massage chair to enjoy all of his new toys in. But these are things that would get pennies on the dollar if he tried to sell it. Then the rest of the first million he spent went to his family. He bought a 5.0 Mustang for his little sister for $45,000. He also bought his dad a 2018 Silverado truck for 68 grand. There was a family trip to Hawaii for almost 12 grand, and then he spent somewhere in the neighborhood of 700 to 800 thousand dollars on a house in Vegas for his parents. When it comes to giving to other people, these are decisions only the giver can properly judge whether it's worth the money or not. Again, hopefully his family members can afford the taxes associated each year, because if not, you know who's on the hook for it. If it were us, if our parents needed a house, we'd buy a decently nice place in Vegas for around 300 thousand dollars. Then we put the rest of the roughly 400 k or 500 k in investments that pay dividends for the parents. Those dividends can easily cover the cost of taxes and repairs on the house with money left over, most likely. But that's just us. Overall, we think that Will Hernandez has been a little risky with his spending, especially being a second round pick on his rookie contract. His future is up in the air ever since he got COVID and became a backup at his position in late 2020. We'll give him a grade of C plus on what he spends his first million dollars on, even if it's the last contract he gets. He could have done better, but it was probably above average when compared to the average athlete. But we'll give Hernandez an A in money management overall, if he was actually able to save 70% of what he's earned. Number 3. Laramie Tunsil Laramie Tunsil is an offensive tackle for the Houston Texans. However, when he first came into the league, he was drafted by the Miami Dolphins. He signed a four-year, $12.45 million contract on his rookie deal, with all of it fully guaranteed since he was a first-round pick. Since his first contract, he's gone on to sign a three-year, $66 million contract with $50 million guaranteed. So he's definitely made a lot more money since his rookie contract, and he represented himself and negotiated his own deal. He had full leverage on his side, so he was able to save a lot on the agent fees. 
So how smart was he spending his first million? Let's go through his interview with GQ. He says that he goes over his spending each month with his financial advisor. He says that he saves 80% of his income and then blows the rest on whatever. Just like with Will Hernandez, if this is true, then it kind of really doesn't matter what he buys with that 20% because he's spending well within his means. So let's assume that he's spent only 20% of his income. 20% of his huge number he's made still lets someone blow a serious amount of cash. How many of his purchases can be sold for close to what he paid? Let's go through some of his worst purchases first. He bought a Lamborghini Urus SUV and he customized it with a purple and cheetah mink interior for 300k. We don't need to tell you that not many people are going to like this customization. When he's done with the Lambo, he'll probably be able to sell it for maybe around 40% what he paid when it's all said and done. But the Lambo truck wasn't his worst purchase. It has to be his Richard Mille watch he paid 200,000 for. He said that he didn't want to be just like everyone else with a Rolex or an Audemars watch. He wanted to be different with a Richard meal on his wrist. However, the thing is, this watch isn't worth a huge price tag. Right now, it's the hot watch to have, but we're willing to bet these watches aren't going to hold value to anywhere close to what he paid years down the road. What were his smartest financial decisions? What were some of the things that are going to hold value for the longest? Nothing really. Maybe his cause collection? He's dropped nearly $50,000 for 12 cause figures. Of course, these are hot right now, but the resale on these collectibles could go in any direction in the future. However, the nicest financial decision Laramie has made is his donation of $250,000 for COVID relief to the city of Houston. That's a really nice way of Laramie to give back to the city he plays for. The rest of his financial decisions with his first million were for his mom and his little brother. He bought his mom a Bentley Continental for $200,000. He bought his little brother a 2020 G-Wagon for $150K. Again, only he knows if giving that to his family is worth it. And with how much he's made, he really doesn't need to worry about the taxes for these things. Overall, we think that Laramie Tunsil was doing an absolutely fantastic job with his money by saving 80% of it. His worst spending decision overall was easily the Richard Mille watch. That's something that he'll probably regret buying in the future when they go out of style like Jacob and Company watches. It's a $200,000 watch that may recoup somewhere around 50 k in the future when he's done wearing it. And this is why we give him an overall grade of a D on how he spent his first million. A lot of what he spent on himself is money he's not going to be able to get back if he had to sell it. But if he saved 80% of what he's made, he'll never have to worry about it. But when it comes to saving and understanding finance, it's absolutely an A+. Also, it's definitely a flex that he saved a lot of money being able to negotiate his own second contract. Number 2. Dwayne Haskins Free agent quarterback Dwayne Haskins is easily a cautionary tale where everything can go wrong really fast for a young athlete that has a seemingly bright future. He was drafted 15th overall by the Washington football team in 2019 to be their franchise quarterback. Just two years later, he became a free agent whose future in the NFL is very much in doubt. Haskins' first NFL contract was a four-year, $14.4 million contract that was fully guaranteed since he was a first-round pick. Despite being on the hook for the full contract amount, Washington still decided to cut him after just two years in the league. Things can quickly change for professional athletes if they're not performing as expected and they aren't professional in their conduct. What he spent on his first million all of a sudden became exponentially more important since his next contract isn't promised, and it practically has zero chance to be considered a big contract in the NFL. Haskins said during his GQ interview that he saved 70% of his income. If that's true, he'll definitely still be doing well financially. So what were some of Haskins' worst decisions? The worst financial decision he made wasn't shelling out 250 k for the Bentley Bentayga. It was paying $10,000 for someone to paint a mural in his basement. Those murals he had painted with his favorite people definitely aren't going to add value to the house when it's time to sell. It's just another sunk cost. Then there's the chain that he made with his initials for 10k. That's another 10k he isn't getting back. He also was paying for a personal shopper to help him find ways to spend his money on fashion. This is easily his most unnecessary expense. What were the smart decisions he made? Maybe his purchase with the Patek Philippe. This is a classic brand watch where the resale value is high. He paid 60k for the Patek, which isn't that astronomical for the most well-known high-end watch that holds its value and may appreciate. The rest of his first million dollars was 
spent on paying for the education for his sister, some vacations, some expensive but necessary dinners for rookie hazing, and then for taxes. The fact that he counted the taxes towards the $1 million shows a little bit of financial savviness. However, he did buy his mom a house for $750K, which wasn't counted in his first million. Overall, it seems like Haskins hasn't really spent too ridiculously on his first contract. His spending became much more of an issue ever since he got cut from the Washington football team. There were some iffy choices right off the bat, such as spending 250 k on the Bentley and 10 k on the jewelry. Also, the personal shopper was just completely unnecessary, because he obviously wasn't spending that much time focused on being a quarterback. But him accounting for taxes and spending his first million brought him up a little bit. We'll give him a B- minus on how he spent his first million. But as far as money management goes, if he did indeed save 70% of what he's made in the league, then it's easily an A. Number 1. Adrian Peterson AP is a slam dunk first ballot Hall of Fame running back when he's finally retired from the game. And that's the reason why he's made almost $103 million alone from salaries and bonuses in 14 seasons in the NFL. But sadly, the most likely reason why he's still trying to play is because he needs money bad. Recently in January of 2021, reports came out that he couldn't pay back a loan he took out for $5.2 million a few years ago. What he owes has since ballooned to at least $8.3 million ever since he started defaulting on his payments. Peterson didn't pay back the loan by the initial agreed-upon date of March 1, 2017. His creditor, D'Angelo Vehicle Sales, LLC, had actually been working with Peterson on payments for the loan. In 2019, Peterson negotiated and signed a settlement agreement that was a great deal for him if he could follow through. Peterson was supposed to make two $50,000 payments on October 18th and Halloween of 2019. He was then supposed to make a $2.25 million payment on November 11th in 2019. Then he was supposed to make a final $25,000 payment within 10 days of his contract being picked up for the 2020 season. If Peterson defaulted on the settlement agreement, he would have to pay the entire amount of the initial loan plus interest. Of course, that didn't happen. If he had made all his payments, it meant that he would have paid less than two and a half million dollars to settle the debt. But instead, because he couldn't pay it, the debt more than tripled. He's now on the hook for the full $8.3 million. Adrian Peterson is the latest athlete who is the cautionary tale. If he had focused more on saving his tens of millions of dollars instead of focusing on spending it, he wouldn't be in the financial situation he's currently in. Supposedly, he's lost a lot of his money from bad investments. But even if investments do go to zero, it still doesn't put someone in debt. They have to willingly take out loans to be in debt. But Peterson is famous for his lavish spending. His 30th birthday party in 2015 is still talked about today. He supposedly spent millions of dollars on just that one party, despite him getting close to the end of his career. The level of insanity for this party is too much to list. But here's just one example of the excess spending he did for his birthday party. Peterson paid for first-class travel for over 300 of his guests, and he paid for all of their five-star hotel rooms. Spending millions of dollars for a party for just one night is easily the worst way to spend a million plus dollars on this list. The grade is an F for the money spent on this party. Overall, we also have to give Adrian Peterson a grade of F in his overall money management. It takes a lot of reckless spending to go into debt after making over a hundred million dollars. Here's what's next.